I know uh, every once in a while on this old Christian journey, it seems like the road gets rough and it gets long, Brother Jamie, but I'm thankful that on this side of salvation, even my worst day over here, amen, being saved was better than my best day out there in that world, amen, <laughs> praise God. All this world will give us is, is pain and misery, but I'm so thankful tonight I took the greatest opportunity I ever could have taken by accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And can I tell you, it gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Amen. Every once in a while, he'll come by, and I like what Brother Pooler said one time. He said, I love going to church and being in the house of God, and you just begin to feel the, the brush of angel wings just come by down the aisle. He said, and the, it's almost like God was saying to him, he said, Dwayne, God's got something good in store for you tonight. Amen. Amen. I come with that same anticipation tonight that the brush of angel wings would come down through Middleburg Church of God and just begin to brush upon each and every one of us. And maybe there's a problem that you face before you come in this house. Maybe there was a bodily illness that you were battling. Can I tell you tonight that just one touch from the hand of the Master and all those problems can go away all that, that burden you've been carrying around can just be taken off of you. The healing you need in your body can take place right here in this service. I, I grew up in a time that Wednesday night was just as important, as important as Sunday morning and Sunday night. And it didn't matter what was going on. Wednesday night, we would have a move of God just as much as we would as in a revival service. And, 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 and I'm so thankful tonight that God said in His Word, He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, He said, there am I in the midst of them. And I, I, I look around me tonight, I see more than two or three, and if we all could come together and worship Him, ain't no telling what God could do in this house. Amen. I just come to give Him glory and give Him honor. I love Him tonight. Hallelujah. Y'all worship the Lord with us tonight. David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached all his loss, said no in Christ. John said he is precious while leaning on his bosom. So for a moment, May I humbly testify And did I mention that I love Him How I worship and adore Him When I can see no way He makes a way And did I mention He's been faithful to every promise He ever made me. I love Him, that's all I want to say. And how many sermons could be preached about this Jesus? And how many songs can be sung about God's love. Well, there's not enough words, enough notes in the music to tell the story of all the Savior has done. And did I mention that I love Him? How I worship and adore Him When I can see no way He makes a way And did I mention He's 
been faithful to every promise he's ever made me. I love him, that's all I want to say. And David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah. And Paul preached all his loss, said, knowing Christ. Little John said he was precious while leaning on his bosom. So for a moment, may I humbly testify. And did I mention? He's ever made me. I love him. That's all I want to say. And did I mention that I love him and how I worship and adore him when I can see the way he makes the way? ever made me I love him that's all I want to say thank you Jesus my life I've heard Christians tell their story how he came to them in the nick of time I've heard of his mercy and his grace and how he saved them on that day but whether young or old the story's still the same that I started sooner if I knew it would have been like this I would have walked the aisle I would have settled it all and gave my life to you looking back over these years they've been the best ones of my life but the only regret I have oh I wish I would have started sooner. I'd started sooner. If I knew it would have been like this, the oh Lord, I would have walked the aisle, would have settled it all, and gave my life to you. Oh, and looking back. Over these years, they've been the best ones of my life. But the only regret I have, oh, I wish I would have started sooner. As a child, the devil blinded my eyes from the greatest choice of my life. I was walking around, oh, so bound from the one that can turn my life around. All alone, broke in despair. But Jesus, you came to me there. You tore down my walls and broke them down. And all oh, the joy that I have found. And I started sooner. If I knew it would have been like this, oh, I would have walked the aisle, I would have 
settled it all and gave my life to you. And looking back over these years, they've been the best ones of my life. But the only regret I have, oh, I wish I would have started sooner. As a child, the devil blinded my eyes from the greatest choice of my life. I was walking around, oh, so bound from the one that can turn my life around. All alone, broke in despair, but Jesus, you came to me there. You tore down my walls and broke them down. And all oh, the joy that I had felt, that I had started sooner. If I knew it would have been like, oh Lord, I would have walked the aisle. I would have settled it all and gave my life to you. And looking back over these years, they've been the best ones of my life. But the only regret I have, oh, I wish I would have started sooner. I started sooner. If I knew it would have been like this, I would have walked the aisle, would have settled it all, and gave my life to you. Looking back over these years, they've been the best ones of my life. But the only regret I have, oh, I wish I would have started sooner. The only regret I have, oh. I wish I would have started sooner. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're all broken today. share of ups and downs times when there was no one around God came and spoke these words to me praise will confuse the enemy I've had my share of ups and downs Times when there was no one around, God came and spoke these words to me. Praise will confuse the enemy. So I started singing and I started clapping. I started dancing, the devil was laughing, he knew my problems, he knew my pain, but I knew God would take them away. I started singing, and I started clapping, I started dancing, the devil was laughing, he knew my problems, he knew my pain, 
but I knew God would take them away. I've had my share of ups and downs, times when there was no one around. God came and spoke these words to me. Praise will confuse the enemy. So I started singing and I started clapping. I started dancing. The devil was laughing. He knew my problems. He knew my pain. But I knew God would take them away. That's why I praise Him with my hands. That's why I praise Him in a dance. He's given me a second chance. Come on, let's praise Him in advance. I started singing and I started clapping. I started dancing. The devil was laughing. He knew my problems. He knew my pain. But I knew God would take them away. That's why I praise Him with the song. When things are right and when they go wrong, He's given me a second chance. Come on, let's praise Him in advance. I started singing and I started clapping. I started dancing. The devil was laughing. He knew my problems. He knew my pain. But I knew God would take them away. I started singing. I started clapping. I started dancing. The devil was laughing. He knew my problems. He knew my pain. But I knew God would take them away. He knew my problems. He knew my pain. But I knew God would take them away. Just like Brother Jamie said the other night, sometimes you just got to let praise go up first. Sometimes you just got to lift those hands even though that body doesn't feel like it. You got to open that mouth and sing that song even when the body doesn't feel like it. <laughs> Amen. When all, everything else is telling you, just don't, just don't do it. Ain't no sense in doing it. You got to do it anyway. Amen. Amen. Because that, that right there, your victory could hinge off of that song. Your victory could hinge right off of that praise. Amen. I tell you, I've just been enjoying myself this week. I've, I, I've, I'm so appreciative of this opportunity that has been given to me to be able to be here this week. I want to say how much I appreciate everything that's been done, the fellowship, this, the, just allowing me to be able to be a part of this revival this week. I, it's just been a, it's been a blessing to my soul. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn me to the book of Ruth tonight, chapter number one. The book of Ruth, chapter number one. Amen. Ruth, chapter number one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Just going to read a few verses there, in verse, starting in verse number 14. I'm not going to read the, the whole chapter, all the verses there, but just going to read a few here. Ruth chapter number 1, verse 14. Hallelujah. If you have it, say amen. <clears throat> Ruth chapter 1, verse 14 says, And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if all but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Look at verse 18 one more time. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. I want to preach tonight, if the Lord will be my help. It's a, it's a phrase and a, it's something we've said many and many a time, but it's just what I felt on my heart today, uh, today and this morning in prayer. I want to preach if the Holy Ghost will anoint and help me on a made-up mind. A made-up mind. Before you see this, stretch your hands toward heaven. Ask the Lord to anoint. that you would come down in this place, Jesus. And God, allow the word of God to go forth and minister to the souls that are here tonight and those that may be listening or is going to listen online later down the road. God, I know that I can't do this on my own, God. I know that I can't preach if your anointing is it upon me, God. Let me feel the power of the Holy Ghost as I stand behind this pulpit tonight, God. Anoint your word and let it go forth and allow it to minister to every man and woman that's here in this house tonight, God. Revive Revive us again, Jesus. Revive us again tonight, Lord. Lord, we're looking not around us, not next to us, not beside us, but we're looking unto you, Jesus. Praying for a mighty breakthrough in this house tonight. Oh, God, anoint thy word in my, in my soul tonight and allow me, Jesus, to be able to preach your word. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. And the church says amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. Like I said, this, this thought of this message or the theme of this message, it isn't nothing new and it's probably something that Brother Jamie hasn't already preached behind this pulpit time and time again. And it's no doubt nothing new that other preachers and evangelists uh, have used standing behind this pulpit or in other camp meetings and other services. Uh, but it's just what God laid on my heart this morning and I could not get away from it. Uh, I got a whole tablet field. I got pages, uh, but that's just not the direction God led me. This is the direction I felt led to go tonight. Amen. If we were to take a poll tonight on, on if anyone here has ever had hell fight against them, I don't think or I don't believe it would be too surprising to see the number of hands that would be raised. We could take a vote on if the adversary, which is the devil, has ever tried to convince any one of you to give up or to quit or if he has ever tried to get you to turn around and walk away. I wonder how many here has ever had Satan say to you, you just can't make it. I wonder how many here has ever heard the words, there is no use in pressing on. I wonder how many here tonight has ever heard the words, why don't you just turn around? Why don't you just give up on the cross? Why don't you just go back? Why don't you just go back? Can I tell you tonight, my friend, there is a lesson that we 
can glean from this story tonight. There is a message within this story. The book of Ruth begins by informing us that during the era when judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. Furthermore, we are told of a family that lived in Bethlehem, Judah, that decided to move from their home to the country of Moab. Elimelech, Naomi, and their two sons departed from their home in a place that was known of fearing God and serving the God Jehovah unto a strange country that did not worship God. Unsure of how long they continued there in Moab, we are only given the info that Naomi's husband died during that space of time and then her two sons eventually died also. So now all that's left is just Naomi and her two daughters-in-law. However, Naomi had heard that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. So she arises with her daughters-in-law to return unto the land of Judah. Aren't you glad and thankful for those times of sweet visitation when God comes down and moves amongst his people? Aren't you glad when even though there are spells where it feels like we're in a dry season, there are spells where we feel like we just don't feel that overflowing like we once have. I don't know how severe that famine got, but Naomi eventually heard that God showed up on his behalf of, of, of his people. Excuse me. God moved and gave them bread. God showed up and visited his children and visited his people. I'm thankful for those times when we gather in this assembly and in this kind of environment and it just takes one service and all of heaven moves. It takes one service and God shows up. It takes one prayer meeting and one revival and the glory of God falls and God visits his people. Amen. I'm thankful for those times of sweet visitation. And Brother Jamie, it's not always in a church setting. There's times when we're in our own prayer closet. There's been times where I've been known to ride down the road. And I look over at the cars driving past me on the interstate, Brother George. And I go over there and we make eye contact. And they got both eyebrows raised. And they're wondering what in the world's going on over there in that car. It was just that sweet visitation. Visitation. It was just the sweet presence of the Holy Ghost that came by at that moment, at that time, to revive my soul, to refresh my soul, to restore my soul. Can I tell you, I believe he's done that this week. The very beginning, I believe God met with us in this house and he gave us a divine visitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for those divine visitations. He showed up and she heard how his people, God's people, had get, have been given a divine visitation from heaven himself, from the Lord himself, and they had bread back home. But notice when she takes her two daughters-in-law, notice what transpires along the journey back from the country of Moab back unto the land of Judah. Naomi turns to her two daughters-in-law and said, Go back. Go and return each of you to your mother's house. In other words, go back to your land. Go back to your people. We find and then it says that she kissed them in other words as to kiss them goodbye. They wept and they cried but they said surely we will return with thee. Their first response to the voice that was trying to persuade them to turn around and go back was surely we are going to keep going. Surely we're going to keep on keeping on. That word surely it means firmly. It means without a doubt. It means certainly uh, with assurance or confidence. Uh, they said surely we're going to go with you. Uh, surely we're not going to turn around. Uh, surely we're not going to quit now. Uh, but surely we will follow thee. Uh, hallelujah. But they hear those words a second time. I didn't read all the scriptures but you look at it yourself. Uh, they hear those words a second time uh, where that voice says turn again my daughters. Uh, turn back around my daughters. Uh, 
That voice said, there is no reason. There is no purpose for you to follow me. There is no purpose for you to go this way. And the scriptures say that they lift up their voice and they wept again. But instead of reading the same phrase that we just read, we find that Orpah, it said that Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. When you cleave to something, you stick or hold firmly onto it. When you cleave to someone, you stay very close to that person. When Orpah decided to turn around, Ruth was steadfast. When Orpah decided to leave and walk away, Ruth was unmovable. When Ruth's sister-in-law had gone back, Ruth still remained. And when even after a third attempt to get Ruth to turn back, by using her very own sister-in-law as an example, saying, look at your sister-in-law and see how she's gone back. Why don't you follow her example? Why don't you do the same thing that she has done? But from Ruth's perspective, you can hear her say, I'm not going to stop following after thee. My sister-in-law may have gone back, but I'm going to keep going. My sister-in-law may have turned around, but I'm going to keep going. My sister-in-law may have gone back, but I'm going to keep going. My sister-in-law may have gave up, but I'm going to keep going. I'm talking about a made-up mind. I'm talking about a made-up mind. Hallelujah. There is a lesson we can glean from this, Brother George. Hallelujah. When here even her own mother-in-law, there's a voice out there. Come on now, somebody. I said there is a voice out there and it's trying to convince people to throw it all away. Help me preach for just a minute, Holy Ghost. I said there is a voice out there and it's trying to convince people to just give up. There's a voice out there. I feel the Holy Ghost helping me tonight. There's a voice out there and it's trying to convince people to leave. There's a voice out there trying to convince people if you walk away, you can find something more easy. Come on now. Come on now. That's where we have fallen in today's society. We want a gospel that will soothe us and ease us. But when it comes to that correcting and it comes to that chastening, and it comes to that reproving. Come on now, somebody. We don't want that kind of gospel. We don't want that kind of doctrine. We don't want those kind of messages. But if you'll preach something that don't step on my toes or prick my heart, I'll stay. And so they've got that voice. That's telling them if you'll just leave and find somewhere else, you'll find a message. There's somebody that'll preach what you want to hear. I said there is a voice and he's quite persuasive but if you've got a made up mind there's nothing he can say I said when you've got a made up mind there's nothing he can whisper there's nothing he can do Whoa, I feel the Holy Ghost I said when you've got a made up mind there's nothing the devil can say that'll get you to walk away I feel heaven in my soul tonight. Brother Paul, when we get a made up mind, you can say what you want to. You can do what you want to. You can think what you want to. But my mind is settled. My mind is made up. It's Jesus. It's the word. It's the highway of holiness for me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord's helping us tonight, church. I've come by to talk to somebody or Middleburg Church of God in general tonight. I said it's going to take a made-up mind. I said it's going to take a made-up mind. It's not going to be a double-minded man. It's going to be a mind that's made up in the man or a woman's life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From Ruth's perspective, three times, three times, the first answer, Ruth and Orpah was both of the mindset, surely, come on now somebody, 
the first time Brother Paul they both surely we're going to keep going my Lord help me tonight surely we're going to keep going then the second time after a few more miles oh help me Holy Ghost after the second time they heard those words turn back turn around why don't you just go back we find that Orpah said okay I think I'm going to go back home I think I'm going to go back come on now somebody we find that Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and turned around and walked away oh help me Holy Ghost but Ruth it said Ruth clave Ruth clave to her mother-in-law it said that she was not willing to depart she had a mind made up you can say what you want to and I know my sister-in-law has walked away but I can't help that but all I gotta do is I've got to stay in the way I've gotta keep on keeping on my mind has not changed my mind has not been deterred she said I'm gonna stay (laughs) come on church I'm gonna stay and then Now, a third attempt. I said a third attempt has been made. Look at your sister-in-law. Look at sister so-and-so. Oh, come on now. Look at sister so-and-so. She's backed out. My God. Look at brother so-and-so. He's left. Look at sister so-and-so. She's given up. Look at brother so-and-so. He's lost hope. Look at brother so-and-so. He's quit giving up. He's quit on God. Look at sister so-and-so. She's lost the fire. Why don't you just do the same? Why don't you just do the same? But when she saw that Ruth said, you can say what you want, but I ain't going to do it. You can say what you will, but I ain't going to listen. Church, listen to me tonight. I don't claim to be nobody, but what God has laid on my heart, I don't care how few in number we get. If everybody else decides to turn around, you keep on going. If everybody else decides to walk away, you keep on pressing on. My Lord. I said, my Lord, my Lord, I don't care if Brother Johnny used to sing every Sunday night and he decided to give up and he walked away from the faith. I don't, don't you give up. I said, you make up in your mind and I'm going to go all the way with Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Look over there in verse 18. Look back at verse 18. After after Naomi said, Behold, look at thy sister-in-law. She's gone back. She turned around. She went back to her people. She went back to her gods. She went back to her old lifestyle. She went back to what she knew. And it listen what she said. She said, Return now after thy sister-in-law. Why don't you just follow her example? There ain't no good in the future this way. My God, she said, I don't have any sons in my belly. There is nothing in the future prospect for you. Why don't you turn around and give up? Church, if we give up now, we're gonna miss out on the greatest moves on the greatest outpourings on the greatest blessings the church has ever experienced you pray for this old preacher's voice I want to give out a Papa Hanks but I ain't got the level hallelujah thank you brother Paul I said if we turn back now oh Ruth she's going
going to miss out on her future. Come on now, somebody. I said if Ruth was to turn back, she going to miss out on her future. You know what happened. She got back home. There was a man by the name of Boaz. Come on now. And then that started the lineage where David come from. Come on now. Come on now. Through Jesse and then through David. And then it all flowed together. Come on now. But if Ruth would have turned around. I said if Ruth would have went back home. If Ruth would have gave up. If Ruth would have said well. If everybody else done it. My sister-in-law's done it. I might as well do it. We'd have never had that. She would have never had that. She would have never experienced. My Lord, church, if we give up now, if we turn around and walk away now, we're going to miss out on some of the greatest moves. You're just not going to be able to convince me that the greatest outpourings has been in the past and we'll never see nothing like that again. You're not going to convince me of that. Because if a people, like I said the other night, if a people will get hungry again and a people will get a passion again, we can experience what they did. We can have what they had. We can feel what they feel. The fire can burn just like it did for them. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's going to take a core of people. I've made up my mind, preacher. Oh, I've made up my mind. <laughs> hey, Ruth's perspective. I'm not going to stop following after thee. My sister-in-law may have gone back, but I'm not going back. And there's nothing you can say. Entreat me not to leave thee. Come on now. You've had your say, but you might as well stop. <laughs> you might as well not say another word, because there's nothing you can say. Come on now. Hell's telling somebody the mountain up ahead is a lot bigger than the last one. You might as well have Satan because there's nothing you can say. I'm going to just tackle that one like I did the last one. I've made up my mind. No matter what giant, no matter what storm, no matter what valley, I've made up my mind. Sister Pat, I've made up my mind. Hallelujah. 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 I don't care how dark the night gets. I don't care how hard the storm blows. I've made up my mind. Hallelujah. I've made up my mind. And it said in verse 18. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded. When Naomi saw that Ruth's mind was made up. Hey, come on now. I believe that we can live in such a way that we can put hell on notice. Come on now. <laughs> They're not afraid. <laughs> Where hell says, hey, they ain't afraid. They're ready to go to battle. <laughs> Come on now, somebody. They're not afraid of a little warfare. I believe we can put hell on notice. Uh, them people over there in Middleburg, uh, they can't change their mind. Uh, I believe we can put hell on notice. Uh, them saints over there in Middleburg, uh, I can't get them to change their mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I 
I can't get them to change their mind. When she saw it, as she was steadfastly minded, meaning when she saw that Ruth's mind couldn't be changed, when she saw that Ruth's mindset couldn't be wavered, when she saw that Ruth's mind couldn't be shaken, when she saw that Ruth's mindset couldn't be coerced or persuaded, Naomi saw Ruth with her mind made up. My friend, the enemy isn't going to just sit by and watch as you follow after Jesus. Don't think for a minute that hell is going to give you a free pass in your pursuit of Christ. The moment you decided to follow Jesus became the very moment that Satan wanted to destroy you. I'm not preaching us down in gloom and doom tonight, but I'm giving you the reality. The moment that Christ turned you upside down, the moment you surrendered your all to Jesus, became the moment hell was deciding to devour you. And he's going to do everything he can. Think about it with me tonight. I said he's going to do everything he can to get you to give up. He's going to fight. He's going to discourage. He's going to try and hinder. He's going to try to oppress. He's going to try to detour. He's going to try to distract. He's going to do anything and everything he can. Think about it. He's going to do everything he can. But you can make it. I said you can make it with a made up mind. I said you can make it with a made up mind. I remember a story of, uh, it had been many years ago, but there was a preacher. And there was an old saint in that church. Faithful, loyal to the house of God. She got down there. She got bad, sick with cancer. I'm talking about it wiped her down to nothing. It it came to the place, Brother Paul, where she would have to literally hold on to both sides, have both hands to hold on to them pews to make her way into church. But with her mind made up, she wasn't going to miss a service. Every service they prayed for, every service she had to make her way to where she could get prayer. But she didn't miss an opportunity to be in the house of God. And when the doctors said, do you want me to call your family? She said, no. Do you want me to call relatives? She said, no. Do you want me to call anybody, your pastor? She said, no. Come on now. She just kept on coming to the house of God. Even after she had been given worse news. And it wasn't very, very much longer for her life. But still, she had her mind made up. She still came to the house of God. She still walked through the doors. And all it took was one visit. All it took was one service. All it took was one atmosphere. In the presence of Jehovah. And the Lord healed that old lady. The Lord took that cancer away. I'm talking about saints with a made up mind. No matter what happens, I'm going to lean on the arms of Christ. Hallelujah. 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 When you take and compare, I won't be too much longer. When you compare the two definitions of the word steadfast and the word fixed, a lot of times when we look at that word fix, we think, oh, something was broke. and We repaired it. We got it back together. But in reality, if you look in Webster's diction, di- definition and, and Webster's dictionary, you'll realize that really to make something whole or to make something over is one of the last. Actually, the very first definition is to be secure, fastened, firm come on somebody 
when you compare the word steadfast and the word fixed, these two words become interchangeable, Brother Paul. Both words imply the message of not changing, being firm and unwavering, being settled and fastened in purpose and in mind. So while Ruth possessed a steadfast mind, a psalmist David contained a fixed heart. My God, help me preach somebody. While Ruth was over there having a made up mind, oh, Psalmist David had himself a settled and fixed heart. Psalms chapter 57 verse 7 says my heart is fixed oh God my heart is fixed I will sing and give praise somebody lift your hands tonight he said my heart is fixed oh God while Ruth has got a steadfast mind oh David's got a fixed heart hallelujah Hallelujah. It is said that when you study out that chapter, it is said that the origin of this psalm is from the time when David fled from Saul in the cave. And when you look at chapter 57, you will notice a couple of things. Number one, when you studied it out, number one, David was in times of calamity. And I ain't got time to go through all of these. But it said David was in calamities. Number two, there were times of reproach. Go back and read it for yourself later. Number three, he said his soul was among lions. Men whose teeth were like spears and arrows. And their tongue a sharp sword. Number four, he said his soul was bowed down. And they set a trap for him. And they dug a pit for him. But notice out of all of that and all that was going on, he said my heart is fixed in the middle of calamities in the middle of reproach in the middle of being surrounded by men that wanted to take him out with his soul bowed down with people laying snares to overtake him my heart is fixed my heart his heart has become established and secure His heart has become firm and fastened in spite of what is trying to destroy him. Can I repeat that? His heart has become established and secure. His heart has become firm and fastened in spite of what is trying to destroy him. David even took the time and the liberty to restate the very fact in Psalm chapter 108. And in verse number 1, he restated it and said, Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. So you got your steadfast mind and you got your fixed heart. Come on now. Come on now. You've got your steadfast mind. It's not only in my mind, preacher, but it's down in my heart. It's not only in my heart, preacher. It's in my mind. I said, and when you get it in both those places, it can then spread down into your hands, into your feet, and then you can become consumed with a made-up mind mentality. Where my feet is on the rock and my mind is made up. Although hell and the storm has tried to shake me, I've become fixed in the rock of ages. I've become fixed in the secure foundation that is the chief cornerstone. Can I just tell you, 
that chief cornerstone, that rock. It is he that has held me together all these years. Come on, somebody. When hell, Sister Amy has tried to break me in pieces by leaning on my rock, by leaning on my Savior, he said he sustained me. Hallelujah. I remember it said, cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. It was Christ my Savior that has held me together and kept me through all these years and all these troubles. Hallelujah. Can I ask you something tonight, my friend, as you stand with me across this sanctuary? I wish I had something else to preach, but this is what God laid on my heart. Is your heart fixed tonight? Hallelujah. Has your heart become fixed? Do you got in yourself a made up mind? Preacher, you just don't know. What hell's been roaring? That old line's been a roaring in my ear. But you just take a lesson from old sister Ruth. Three times. I said three different times. And every one of those times her mind could not be changed. Hell's not just going to sit back after one attack. Hell's not just going to turn around and give up after one time of battle. He's going to come again. I said you better believe it. He's going to come again. You still got your mind made up. As Brother Jake and Sister Sierra is coming to sing, I want to know who would be the first one to step out of these altars and come find themselves a place to pray and say, Preacher, I'm going to make sure that I've got a made up mind. I'm going to make sure that I've got a fixed heart. I don't want hell. I'm not going to allow hell to pull me down. I'm not going to let hell pull me out of the way. I said, my eyes is on Jesus. I am looking unto the author and the finisher of my faith. And even though the floods is coming and the waters is arising and the rain is a falling and hell is talking to me and the devil's trying to get me to give up, I've got a made up mind. My heart is fixed on thee, O Lord. My heart is fixed on thee, O Lord. My friend, can I just ask you tonight, church, let's pray. We are living in these last days. We are living in these last moments. We must have a made up mind. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But my mind is made up. I won't go back. I can't go back to how it used to be. I won't go back. I can't go back. There's nothing behind me. Egypt has nothing for me. All my hopes, all my dreams are laying ahead of me in Christ and Christ alone. My mind has become settled. My mind has become settled. Say what you want to, devil. Say what you will, Satan. Push me as much as you want. I'm on the road. Free. I'm on the road. Deliver. Pray, Middleburg. Pray. No matter what happens, no matter what takes place in these last days. Before Jesus returns, you make up your mind. You get a heart, a, a fixed heart. You become stuck like glue to the Savior of the Word of God. Where nothing that hell does can pull you apart. 
He'll break out his crowbar. He'll break out his tool to separate you. But you make up your mind. I said you make up your mind tonight in these orders. You let heaven fix that heart. Or it's just you and Jesus. Or it's just you and the Lord. And nothing, nothing shall separate you. Pray, saints. Pray, saints. Pray, saints. For this moment to come. And I want.